Using editing features This section describes the editing features that can help you manipulate the command line. Although enhanced editing mode is automatically enabled, you can disable it, re-enable it, or configure a specific line to have enhanced editing. These procedures are optional. To globally disable enhanced editing mode, enter this command in line configuration mode. To re-enable the enhanced editing mode for the current terminal session, enter this command in privileged exec mode. To reconfigure a specific line to have enhanced editing mode, enter this command in line configuration mode. Move around the command line to make changes or corrections. Press Ctrl B, or press the left arrow key. Move the cursor back one character. Press Ctrl F, or press the right arrow key. Move the cursor forward one character. Press Ctrl A, move the cursor to the beginning of the command line. Press Ctrl E, move the cursor to the end of the command line. Press Escape B, move the cursor back one word. Press Escape F, move the cursor forward one word. Press Ctrl T, transpose the character to the left of the cursor with the character located at the cursor. Scroll down a line or screen on displays that are longer than the terminal screen can display. Note, the more prompt is used for any output that has more lines than can be displayed on the terminal screen, including show command output. You can use the return and space bar keystrokes whenever you see the more prompt. Press the return key to scroll down one line. Press the space bar to scroll down one screen. Redisplay the current command line if the switch suddenly sends a message to your screen by pressing Ctrl L or Ctrl R to redisplay the current command line. You can use a wraparound feature for commands that extend beyond a single line on the screen. When the cursor reaches the right margin, the command line shifts 10 spaces to the left. You cannot see the first 10 characters of the line, but you can scroll back and check the syntax at the beginning of the command. The keystroke actions are optional. To scroll back to the beginning of the command entry, press Ctrl B or the left arrow key repeatedly. You can also press Ctrl A to immediately move to the beginning of the line. The arrow keys function only on ANSI compatible terminals. In this example, the access list global configuration command entry extends beyond one line. When the cursor first reaches the end of the line, the line is shifted 10 spaces to the left and redisplayed. The dollar sign shows that the line has been scrolled to the left. Each time the cursor reaches the end of the line, the line is again shifted 10 spaces to the left. The software assumes you have a terminal screen that is 80 columns wide. If you have a width other than that, use the terminal width privileged exec command to set the width of your terminal. Use line wrapping with the command history feature to recall and modify previous complex command entries. You can search and filter the output for show and more commands. This is useful when you need to sort through large amounts of output or if you want to exclude output that you do not need to see. Using these commands is optional. To use this functionality, enter a show or more command followed by the pipe character. One of the keywords is begin, include, or exclude, and an expression that you want to search for or filter out. Expressions are case sensitive. This example shows how to include in the output display only lines where the expression protocol appears. Before you can access the CLI, you must connect a terminal or a PC to the switch console port and power on the switch. If your switch is already configured, you can access the CLI through a local console connection or through a remote telnet session but your switch must first be configured for this type of access. You can use one of these methods to establish a connection with the switch. Connect the switch console port to a management station or dial-up modem. Use any Telnet TCP IP or encrypted secure shell, SSH, package from a remote management station. The switch must have network connectivity with the Telnet or SSH client, and the switch must have an enable secret password configured. The switch supports up to 16 simultaneous Telnet sessions. 
Changes made by one Telnet user are reflected in all other Telnet sessions. After you connect through the console port, through a Telnet session or through an SSH session, the user exec prompt appears on the management station.